didn't even like get rid of the voice and stuff tonight so they're gonna hear us like immediately being goofy <laughs> i just don't <laughs> i was not i feel i do feel a little bit like um like when we were in the open beta phase and mm -hmm. just random tuesdays it would be like hey here's the game it's all happening and stuff um I feel like that happened to us today where I did not expect this at all. All right, Steven, are you ready? I, listen, I was born ready. Okay, sick. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven. <laughs> and this is The Faint Divinities, a channel dedicated to, I don't know, talking, playing about, listening to, scouring the internet for anything and everything about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Darrington Press, the publishing house under critical role, juggernaut in the tabletop space. I don't know that they like that, but that's what they're called, and it's pretty accurate. Um, that... No longer, everyone, no longer is in open beta. The website that I have shared on the screen at this point is completely changed as of today, September 17th. The game is not in open beta anymore. We are officially in the finalization of the product launch that we now know is coming to you. I'll highlight if you need me to spring of 2025, guys. This is happening and it is happening very soon. And um, today, uh, <laughs> Stephen, where were you when I called you this morning? When um, I was at uh, home when you called me this morning. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Yeah, because yeah. every so, so I was telling Stephen before the stream started that um, it felt mm -hmm. like open bit yeah is it spring yet like is it thursday yet absolutely mm -hmm. um because it felt very much like open beta today because i nobody knew that this was happening some of us in the darrington press discord had suspicions it would be soon but i don't know why none of us pieced it together and so when the announcement of pre-order came up we were all like oh my god and I knew, of course, we had to do it to you. We had to come here for our GM talk. So welcome, everybody, to our talk about what happened today. Uh, Lissandra saying loves that the feature art is a ribbit. Of course. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful feature art. And of course, it's a ribbit. They're amazing. They're amazing. They're amazing. the class to play. Oh, sorry. The ancestry right. to play. Ancestry. <laughs> this is, listen, we're all very tired also because... We were playing and not live, not streamed, but Daggerheart last night. So until like midnight. So sorry, mm -hmm. guys. Hi, Rogerion. It's so good to see you. Okay. So a very brief recap. Okay. What happened today is the communication started being blasted by Darrington Press, Critical Role, everyone associated with Critical Role. We're talking Matt Mercer, Spencer Stark, Marisha Ray, I think um, Laura Bailey was in on the action, Sam Regal, of course. Everyone, all of the artists, Michael Underwood, who's worked on Critical Role, all started echo chambering, hey, go order Daggerheart now. It's up and available for pre-order. And Matthew... Mercer and Spencer Stark were going and did a video at 2 p.m. Pacific today at se September 17th. Um, that video was to talk about changes that have been introduced to the system since the open beta closed off. We're going to be very cautious today about what we talk about, but they have been very transparent with what's going on. We could talk about a lot. So the first piece of today is to let everybody know that you heard it here probably last, but you've heard it here. Daggerheart is available for pre-order and this website is totally new. This is the same thing I always take y'all to, daggerheart.com. But it's it's different. You can, so now pre-order Daggerheart. Now it has a link to go to it. Oh my God, look at that shiny little metal that happens. God, anyway, um, there are two versions that you can order. The Daggerheart core set, which is the complete set of rule book and cards, plus a treasure trove of art, game ideas, and tips for players and game masters. That's right. It is one book. It is one book. For players and game masters, you only need the one. I think this is brilliant. I love it. Um, 
all held within a rich nearly 300 page rule book and 279 cards with vibrant artwork on each one but that sweet sweet dagger heart limited edition which is everything in the core set and so much more in this upgraded box set the limited edition will never all caps be remade and contains a gm screen dagger master screen if you nasty a dice set <laughs> a rip pad of character sheets and tokens, as well as a sweeping alternate cover art treatment. So, oh my God. So Steven, we were talking about this before stream. Are you going to be getting the limited edition at some point? Listen, I it's, it's more than I want to spend, but it's also, it's never going to happen again, right? Never. And it that, says all caps, never. In e all caps, never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really, the I'm a... I was telling Rachel and, you know, forgive the language, but I'm going to, I'm a limited edition slut. I'm, yeah. I'm about it. <laughs> we yeah. I, I, and I was saying, I really am like, I love it. I always want it. I oh, really yeah. get it though, because it's expensive, yeah. you know, like, and, and so I don't do it often, but this is my thing. And I already brought this up to remind mm. Steven, but Stephen got me this years ago as a Christmas present. The Chronicles of Exandria, The Tale of Voxwagon. It's just an art book. This is a limited edition item. I don't know, but like the quality that goes into like the foil and everything on anything that they create is so good. Limited edition is usually not worth it. When we're talking about Critical Role and Darrington Press, it is, especially because we know how big art is going to be as part of this game their art is so so good steven we have a comment do you want to read that yeah so um mc cat said uh in, in their discord they mentioned that there's going to be a, car, a card holder um and it will hold and fit it upright on a bookshelf which is like it's gonna like be art that you can case. place yeah around your house that's amazing Oh my god, you guys, clock in in spring when my background is just all the dagger heart cards. Like, oh my god, I want them. Anything you're not using, like, in play at the moment, just, it's a decoration around your house. Just literal art, just tiny little uh -huh. portraits around your house, absolutely. No cute, no cute. Put them up in the hallway like a goddamn family history. I don't know. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I, I'm very excited about it. So there are these two versions. Everybody cares about price, obviously. The pre-order options, if you go to explore these, and by the way, the whole website is redone. Look at that giantess. I don't remember her having that eye in the center of her forehead. Maybe it was there. Um, it was. Okay, great. <laughs> so first, you can, <laughs> so remember, if you're a Beacon member, which I am, you do get Beacon Heart, which is so cute, uh, to get, I think it's 10% off. Yep, 2% off of both the standard and limited editions. Uh, and so you pick your region. I pick US. Yes, these are the versions available, guys. You can't see the pop-up on my screen because of the way that privacy stuff works these days, but there's not a ton of them. I know a lot of people in South America were already saying, hey, I would like it, and it's just, I'm sorry, guys. Um, but Ho I Hopefully sooner rather than later, you'd, you'd think, but, yeah. you know, I'm... They're pretty quick about getting that stuff out. Well, there's been a specific issue in like South America, I know, but mm. hopefully at some point. And also, hi, Bun Bun Riri. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Hello. Um, Velocidad makes a great was. point. There was a discount code for the open beta folks as well. If you were in the open beta, then you also have a discount, okay? Um, so, and, you know, I'm not going to, anyway. So, the pricing. Everybody wants to know about this pricing, right? Um, the core set, $60. So reasonable yeah. for all Crazy. of these cards. Plus the You're back getting almost 300 cards and a core like rule book that has player and DM guide material inside of it is crazy. Think about like how much... 300 cards would cost you in a Magic the Gathering situation. Think about that real quick. How much is Bloomboro right now? I don't know. I don't know. But 300 cards of Magic the Gathering, like, and this is the core set. This is, this is a good cost. And again, I think some of the way that they've managed to do this is because it's just that one book. Um, yeah, yeah. 
It, it's crazy though, because when you think about it, like a uh, the I believe the new players handbook, because the new 20, 2024 uh -huh. players handbook came out. Mm -hmm. That's forty nine ninety nine. Sure is. So isn't it? for ten dollars more. Yeah, and that's just a, uh, the, the the handbook. And for ten dollars more, you get all those cards. Yeah, you get the little case, the little magnetic case. Which you, I am once again, I'm a I'm a pack rat. I'm a clutter monster. I love a box. I love, it. I love, I love a, box. a box. I love a box. <laughs> yeah, Lissombra, just a core rule book goes for about that. That's what Stephen is referencing here. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And mm -hmm. you, again, that whole thing that we know what's about to happen in, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. We're going to drop all trans, all the, the obfuscation tonight in Dungeons and Dragons 2024. I'm not, 5.5 is what it is. Um, they are dropping you a, a new book, but they're about to drop you materials consistently. And it's got to be 20 page supplements for mm -hmm. $40 is what yeah. you're going to get. Dagger Heart is the entire core set is 60 as the pre-order. Um, mm -hmm. And I guarantee you it's going to be quality. I'm not trying to be a hater. I just, I was really happy to see that this was the rate. Um, now, that limited edition though, 150. It is only 150, right? That's all you got to say. Is it only 150? Yeah, listen, it is more. It, it certainly is more. Uh, but it's that capital N E. V E R never um, with that GM screen, those mm -hmm. player, oh, those tokens. Like I, who knows? Limit three per customer, but again, shipping uh, estimated spring of 2025. Um, hi, the final brain cell dagger heart pre-order. Yeah, so I I feel that I should let everyone here know that I have already ordered mine, um, the limited edition <laughs> that will come to it as a shock to no one. Um, it, it's there uh, because again, I have not. I, I'm the, I'm the, on the fence. I'm like, do I spend just the sixty, get everything that I need, and be happy, yeah. or do I spend the extra money, get the extra things, and then show it to my wife as often as I can, so she can understand why I spent the extra money and not be mad about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fair. <laughs> Rachel bought this as like a, a birthday. Also, Rachel got some nice things from doing Gen Con and everything. So. I, I it worked, but it's it was a wild choice, you know. So. It was also uh, wild hearing you refer to yourself in the third person. Rachel is <laughs> always okay. Like, if, if the cat, the D and D twenty twenty four alt art players handbook yeah. is three hundred and eighty four pages for fifty dollars, just the book. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Final brain cell. If I had money right now, I'd dish up the one hundred and fifty with no hesitation. I gotta tell you guys. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the the GMs from da the the GMs that ran Daggerheart at Gen Con, one of Jan, she wouldn't mind me saying, Jan reached out to all of us and she was like, "Y'all, please tell me not to buy this." And we were all like, "We already bought it. What are you talking?" About? <laughs> all of us were like, "We bought too." <laughs> Wild. But I, I just, I think again, I have to justify it a certain extent. So I'm going to pull out another thing that again was a limited edition critical role thing with gold foil. They love gold foil. Mm -hmm. The tarot deck. Does anybody here remember the tarot deck from years ago? Yes, that's right. I have a copy. And again, oh, so beautiful. The gold foil that they care, the love that they craft into these Vexalia, my eternal babe. I'm not telling you to buy it i'm justifying why i bought it you know like it's, it's compelling reasons um, so hot everything is just so hot look at that person you know who that is it's matt mercer that's matt mercer okay all right all right we, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we're, we're in it on. now let's 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 move on let's um yeah, let, let's let's, on. let's yeah. jump right into to what i think uh yeah let me, if I'm going to guess uh -huh. the thing that you're going to say okay. that you liked about the stream the most is just how 
focused they are at making it accessible and streamlined for like everybody. For everybody, yeah. For I, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the summer, please tell me not to buy this. Rachel just got my confirmation number. Exactly. Yes, accessible. <laughs> I love accessible. I do, I do, I do. Yes, I agree. So let's talk about some of these. We're diving in. We're going to go away. Go to daggerheart.com if you want to see all of the different stuff that is on this website. But we are diving right in. So first, you know, um, the, the video went up today. Oh, can I even? I always struggle with this portion specifically it's okay let me it's it's okay that's that view is probably fine um so the 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 <laughs> video went up today and the a lot of the changes that they are talking about threw me for a loop but you're right one of the things that i really loved to hear is that they wanted to streamline everything. They're trying, they talk so much about, hey, yes, we know that X change is a little bit crazy or Y change is a little bit wild. But the reason that we did that change was because we wanted to make it more accessible. Let's talk about the fricking elephant in the room, action tracker. Yeah, gone. right off the bat, they were like, no action tracker, it's Just gone. gone. Yep. It's yep. crazy to hear. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as you know, I, I did uh, run for four games here recently in uh, Northern Moon, and I did not like the action tracker. Mm -hmm. It was, it felt That's jarring true. sometimes, mm -hmm. and it felt awkward, and it was like, well, I'm having to trade in hope to do things anyway. Like, why do I, or what, trade in my fear to do the things I want to do anyway? Why don't I just have fear? Um, and that's what they do. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, the final brain cell said the word clunky. And and I yes, would I, I so listen, I as a lover of the action tracker, I cannot, I cannot in good faith call it clunky for me. Spencer Stark actually brought that up, and I was glad that we had someone who in the community was like, listen, we liked it. Um, but the I get what they're saying, which is that it was adding a whole other economy in a mm -hmm. whole nother currency of action tokens in that were getting placed on these cards and stuff i love it when you make that face steven i never know what this face is but it's my favorite uh, one like, I, are you, you know, getting i'm, I'm agreeing oh. yeah, yeah, yeah well it's awesome that yeah I got it. Okay. Um, yeah. The oh, MC Cat says my group hasn't used action tokens for the past three sessions now. Mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, listen. I loved the action tracker because it makes sense to me. I like little tradesies. I'm a little goblin, so I'm like you get a and I get a, which they have not. It's not gone. They still they still have an economy. It's just all the fear system now. Okay. Yeah, watching them do the like combat at the end, you can see it just like so with with Matt and he was just and I mean Spencer was feeding him fear, but Matt was it was just so much. Oh yeah, it Spencer, felt more poor fluid. Spence, poor yeah. guy. Jeez, <laughs> he's getting freaking just slam dunked on in that way. The dice sometimes are not in your favor. Yeah. Um, that is, and I, you know, it brings up a good point that our group actually talked about during the open beta process as part of our feedback, which was, hey, one of the problems here is that having everything you do equate to an action means you are maybe not incentivized to act always. Yeah. So taking that out of the equation and just having it associated when fear happens and giving more ways for a GM to have, start with more fear because you start with what your players exist as is what they said. And then um, you gain more on short and long rest. Uh, so all of this is is very oh they also said at the very tail end you have a way bigger bucket of it to use and everything so oh interesting i didn't hear that yeah they did say that so it's very so it seems like a good system i'm very you know it seems like a good system um so no action tracker that's the first big one. Second one health thresholds are now 
sorry, I do not want to call it health thresholds. I want to call it damage thresholds are yeah. now tied to armor instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, interesting for sure. Yeah, so, you know, to remind everybody of what we're talking about, those damage thresholds, because this system is more built in, uh, like, you don't have a number of health that gets subtracted each time. Instead, you have health points, heart pieces in Legend right. Zelda kind of thing. When you get hit, depending on bat, on how on on how big the hit is, you lose more of those health points, heart pieces, heart health slots, whatever you want to call them. Um, that used to be coming from your class. If you were a guardian, you had more of a higher damage yeah, the higher, threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that's coming from the armor that you don. Um, yeah. I didn't love this at first when I heard it um, because to me, I thought that what I felt was, okay, well then how are you, how, how does a guardian feel stronger than a wizard? And again, every time that I have doubts, they answer my question and they said, well, because this is just, this is just armor that you don. It should be the same regardless and it should scale at higher tiers and stuff. It's really your health though, that is going to increase. They equated now three different structures of these manipulatives. You have your health, which is your, oh my gosh, your heart, your mm -hmm. armor, which is your body and your stamina, which is your mind, or sorry, your stress, which is your mind. So cool that they have that and they all have these pieces now. How'd you feel about this change? Um, I think that like looking at it through like the wider lens, when I first heard it, I was like, ah, that seems strange. But I think looking at it through the wider lens, it isn't, it, it makes sense in the way they originally like kind of pitched the game of like, hey, you could take a wizard and just like make him into a tank make him into like a big wall that's hard to hit. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do with it. You just, you can still be that wizard and you can grab that really thick, heavy armor yeah. and you can feel like a wizard that is a tank. Yeah. I think it leans back into what they were saying originally about that like narrative freedom of like, mm -hmm. not every wizard has to wear robes and, right. you know, here that we have big naked baby, but like, uh, uh, you you can still flavor whatever you're wearing certainly but now you have more freedom to actively call it what it is i am wearing this lots of armor item which causes me to be slower potentially but yep. because of a strong wizard my arcane force field is very strong so um and this is the other piece of that yeah Do yeah you want to talk about how it impacts the math of it all yeah, I liked this a lot. This is the part of it that I, uh, beyond just the thresholds themselves, the armor slots now, um, say you have a score of eight, you would have eight uses of an armor slot, is what I understood from that. Eight slots to use. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, but yes, yeah. absolutely. That's the number of slots you get. Um, and then uh, no matter the amount of damage, if it's within your major or within your severe, if you mark a armor slot, it automatically reduces it to this, the one right below it. So if you're in severe, it goes to major. If you're in major, it goes to minor. Absolutely. If you're in minor, it zeroes out. Perfect. Which it just, it makes it so much easier with like, oh, I did... And I think they said this uh, like almost verbatim. It's like, oh, I did like 46 points of damage, but I'm going to use three armor slots. And well, oh, keep going, keep going, yeah. And and then the, the, I have 12 an 12 armor, so that's that's 36. So I mitigate the damage all again. Yeah, it's a lot of math. It's a lot of math in the previous system because remember, mm -hmm. one important thing um, is that you cannot mark more than one at this point, I think is what they said. I think that's what they said. Yes, so so you can't, but but like people in chat are saying, like Rogerian is saying, I really like the armor change, less math, which speeds up battles. The final brain mm -hmm. cell, agreed. Simplifying how the armor slots and such works is so great. One attack equals one armor slot, 100%. So you yeah. can't just, if something hits you in your severe, you mm -hmm. will not be able to reduce that to zero anymore. Um, no. it, you can drop it into your major, right? Uh, by using one of your slots, okay? Yes. Yeah. 
The cool thing about all of this is they, and they said it perfectly, the problem really isn't at the low levels where most people have played. Most of us have, most of our time has been at those lower levels, though we've done some high stuff. Um, yeah. The problem is at that higher tier of play when you are sitting there being like, okay, well, I have 12 armor slots, 12 times the score is seven, and then I'm going to drop it by. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that was the only outlier left. That was yeah. the last problem of this system says that it's not trying to be crunchy, but this is crunch. Get your calculators mm -hmm. ready. Um, this was the final thing, the t final tower on the map, and it has fallen. I think we are actually at the lightly crispy place that people said we were going to be at all along. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think, I think overall it'll make... It, like thinking about battles like it'll make battles more t intense because you won't be able to be like all right i mitigate all of that and then I'm, i don't have any damage to me yeah it's gonna make it feel like you're always getting pecked a little bit which also i think is gonna make because that was one thing that having us playing we played for a while mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. short rest always was like oh i'm gonna be fine no matter what because yeah. i'm gonna get back the two things that I used, which was normally stress and armor. Yeah. But this is going to make, I think it will force you to actually like use it to like bring health back too. So now you actually have to make that choice. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to play it that way and see how it actually plays out. I'm loving the stuff that we're getting in the community, by the way. This is such a well-loved rule change already. Um, Wither yes. and Bloom Studios, who, by the way, I do want to call out for anybody here that I, just last week, and it released on Monday, which, oh my God, was yesterday, geez. Um, I w guested on Wither and Bloom Studios' podcast and everything, which is up on YouTube. So if y'all want to go hear me say dumb things in another channel, go over there. They have great content. They've done a lot of dagger heart too they say uh wither and bloom studio said one attack equals one armor slot seems more logical in the terms of the narrative the weapon strikes once and the armor absorbs once a hundred percent and this i like I, I i'm seeing mc cat talking about this i'm seeing rogerian absolutely talking about the math um that is one of the things that i liked because when I heard this, I started texting people immediately and we we initially had the same feedback, which was, well, that kind of stinks because what if you have, let's say you have two health left and you're hit for a severe, you have enough armor left that you could mitigate it all the way down to zero, but the rule says you can only mitigate it to one. So you drop anyway. I was like, well, that kind of stinks um, yeah. because you guys know that I'm critical analysis girly, right? But then Spencer and Matt brought it up. They said, okay, yeah, but here's the thing you need to think about. Let's say that a dragon flies overhead and spews lava onto the battlefield. All of your players could then say, okay, well, I'm going to mark all of my armor and we're all just standing there naked in the field, but we're all great. That doesn't feel like it's respecting story first, narrative driven focus. Right. Touche, bitch. Like, I can't argue with that shit. Well done. Like, okay, I'm in. I'm always in. They continue to astound me with how well they have thought about every single change that they put in place. Incredible. Yeah, and, and MC Cat said it too. And I, I think, like, coming from uh, the game we played where uh, Chris was playing Grim and he was that just tank, that guardian of de uh, death, basically. Crits will actually feel like it deals something to a Seraph or a Guardian. They're just like so beefy, so tanky before. It'll be interesting to see like how much you can actually hurt them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, give me just one second about TRPG. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I do also want to note that Chris, who is Rooks in our Twitch chat and is usually in here, he said, yeah, I like it. I think high amounts of damage hurting you no matter what now makes the game feel more dangerous. And I agree. And even in the open beta versions of the manuscript, it said it a lot of, hey, this is a game that should have high highs and low lows. Sometimes this is going to make that happen. And it also mm -hmm. addresses the other. I don't think that 
because I'm such a player advocate as a GM, I don't think we felt it as a problem at our table, but evasion no. didn't ever feel significant until late iterations of open beta. Um, but you know what felt really significant and made you feel like a god was good armor. Um, oh, like a fucking <laughs> god. Yeah, like you, uh, as the GM, it was really hard for me to kill or hurt anybody that had a lot of armor. Very quickly, the game meta was going to become just all the armor. Just put everything towards increasing an armor score, you know? Um, Wither and Bloom Studios, I have a question that may have been answered in the earlier review of the pre-order. Will they be releasing the latest rule changes as playtest materials like they have been, or are they shutting that off now? I think that I have the answer for you there, which is that um, open beta is closed, and we are, we are stabilized at 1.5, okay? 1.5 until release in spring 2025 is what everyone will still have access to, including on Demiplane.com. You could still build characters in 1.5. That's going to be the last thing you see. They're not going to publish anything else until that point. But if you join the Darrington Press Discord, they have little snippets of information that some people might get access to. So go join that Darrington Press Discord. <laughs> That's my little show for them. But yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So that is a lot about the armor change, but to me, that was the last tower of change. Everything yeah. else is pretty light touch, I would say. Um, let's talk about, oh, campaign frames. Oh, God, I have some thoughts. Yeah, runs out the door to join Daring to Press Discord. Get your ass in there, absolutely. Um, so. Yeah. Campaign frames. Um, oh, he's hiding in the shadows, reading things. I never post anything. I'm so scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the campaign frames. Let's talk about Matthew Mercer. <laughs> um, Matt, you, I have, guys, get into that 1.5 manuscript. This stuff is so cool. The campaign frames yeah. that they were already talking about very lightly were very good. The final brain cell. So excited to yeah. see more about Camp Brain. Same. Camp, yeah, me too. Because here's the thing again. When, Stephen, you said accessibility, right? Yeah. Targeting accessibility. Mm -hmm. To me, Dungeons and Dragons, I don't, I want to stop, but I just can't. A lot of their metric at this point is release books that you pay for that have whole little settings in there that put you in a different situation. You have Ebron, right. you have, you know, Spelljammer, all these different ones. What Daggerheart is doing is saying, hey guys, it's still your imagination. So we're going to yeah. give you a snippet. We're going to give you a campaign frame. It's going to give you words of like the tone that you should expect. It's going to give you a few small light mechanics and then you can be wherever you want. And Oh, yeah. yeah MC Cat. Yeah. yeah. You want to read that one? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the bits they gave us in 1.5 for campaign frames has me excited for the final versions. You and me both. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Velocidad, same thing. Oh, Velocidad. He's written a couple and it's a great tool. I may have seen some of those, but please continue to put them in the Discord. I keep... I have no time for anything anymore, but I love them and I'm making a <laughs> backlog and I'm going to get to everything. So anyway, um, the campaign frames are so good. I really, I, I know that I had seen some that were like, oh, the tone here is like Legend of Zelda or the wind also rises. Um, <laughs> the tone of what Matt really wants to do, what he seems to be the most interested in, there he is gesturing wildly on screen, mm -hmm. is what they are calling Age of Umbra. Umbra as yeah. in shadow. Because he wants to do like a Dark Souls, Soulsborn campaign frame. Can I tell you a prediction that will be wrong? Probably. Let's hear it. I everybody here knows and y'all all disagree with me and that's fine everybody here knows that i think that at some point critical role is going to try <sighs> to move into dagger heart so I, here rachel i i'll tell you something real quick please do <laughs> today with the announcement and like time frame like are actually being set i don't disagree with you anymore i Before, fucking did it 
before I really thought it was going to be like more of like late next year when it came out. Mm -hmm. And if it was late next year, I was like, if they finish up, they're not going to hold off for that long. Mm -mm. No, um, they wouldn't. No. no. Yeah, they wouldn't. Mm -mm. Why would they? Were they going to have it done early spring? Yeah. Well, just spring, right? I don't think it says early spring. No, no. And technically, remember, guys, Q1, which is January, February, March, is different from spring, which is March, yeah, April, yeah, yeah. May. It could yeah. be at any point in May. I I am still there of like, this is 10th anniversary. This is March. My birthday is March 10th. Two days later, March 12th. It's coming, baby. Um, My prediction. I'm so glad that you're here with me. So here, come, come along yeah, with me on this trip. I'm, I'm ready. ready. What Matt was talking about was a world where the gods have fallen. And around the plain, there are these scattered ruins of cathedrals and people clinging to the last hope of the gods returning, reaching for the light. May I ask you what a world would look like if Matt Mercer were to destroy the world that he's built? What would that look like? Would it maybe look like the Age of Umbra? Listen, when he was describing it, all I could think was... Damn, that sounds good. Yeah, and people want to say, people want to say, Rachel, that's crazy. He would never, he already has. Do you, where were you when De Draconia was destroyed? Yeah. Where were you, guys? Because I was there when we saw yeah. a Mr. Tiberius Stormwind on a rampart. I know, you're not. We don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But I am, t I like, there is something in my heart that says, because another thing, and Stephen, you know about the way that I build games at home where I like to draw on stuff from the world happening around me. And I know that people don't always love this. Don't I, I tailor to whatever people are comfortable with. But if it's a pandemic, as long as my players are comfortable, I will tell a story about a rampant disease or something because I seek catharsis in those ways. I know that tabletop is not meant to be therapy, but it's helpful for me because that's where my head is. I have seen some of that that Matt Mercer, I feel, does. And what a way to do a play within a play of theater to say, hey, Dungeons and Dragons, the old world, Daggerheart, the new, destroy, grow. I am here. Now, I'm probably crazy. <laughs> Rooks with their rip, <laughs> RIP Tiberius, yeah. I am here. Um, yeah, uh, the final brain cell. I kind of want to see some revamping of characters from Vox Machina, Mighty Nine, uh, Bell's Hells in Daggerheart. Yeah, um, stay tuned because I have I have made a lot of them on paper already just to see what it's like. Pike Trickfoot's on the Instagram. You can see that, but I do, I agree. I want to see it in Critical Role. So um, anyway, Age of Umbra, campaign frames in general. Apparently there are a lot of them. Steven, I just want to ask, if you could have a campaign frame, what kind of a world would you want to live in? If you were basing something off of like fantasy movies or sci-fi or books, what world are you, would you be most excited to play in? Um, so I've been writing a campaign for like two, two and a half years now. And I'm about to go live with some friends uh, probably at the end of the year. Um, but it's, it's a world about big gods big animal gods and they have giant cities built on their backs and the people live on those cities like uh kind of like the lion turtles from avatar yeah yeah so your one of your touchstones then would be like avatar or even mm -hmm. even like breath of the wild yeah where, yeah yeah um also uh mortal engines that kind of like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love that. Um, yeah, I I think that one of my worlds that I would want to see is like I really like labyrinth stuff, stuff that's like creepy but fantastical and beautiful all at the same time. The last unicorn. MC Cat loves your idea. Yo, that sounds. Ah, awesome. thank you. Yeah, Steven's been talking to me about it for a long time. I really are yeah. you gonna do that live when you do it, or are you just gonna play it? Listen. 
did. Okay, it's, probably not. Okay. <laughs> probably you should not. at least publish. Or would you consider making it in Daggerheart instead of Dungeons and Dragons? Um, I so I've already my I've already started that thought process. That's part of the delay. Is like, ah, do I wait until it comes out and then start it in this new system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, bully him the in the Discord. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. So, um, fantastic. Uh, I do also want to note that if you go and watch the video, that's most of what they talked about. There wasn't like a ton, but if you go and watch the video, you will see an example of play. Now, heads up, Spencer Stark gets wrecked. The dice, wrecked. Were, the dice were not his friend this day. Nope. And Matt Mercer was being Matt Mercer. He was just rolling, rolling bones. Um, and so it was, it was, it was a hard time, um, but a really good way to showcase the, the fear that a GM can build. And I remember we, a lot of us that are here today, you, you were all in the chat and everything with, alongside me. And we were watching as Matt, mm. as fear. Oh my God, Wither and Bloom Studios. Thank you so much for subscribing. I have to fix my little thing on the Twitch channel. It usually pops up, but that is so, so kind. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And hey guys, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube later, remember that we do have a YouTube, uh, sorry, we do have a Twitch that you can come support us at. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can support us monetarily for free for you. You get one free. Yeah, you get one free subscription. Come support a small group. But thank you so much. I It's probably Todd. And if it is, thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, so the, the, piece that I want to talk about is Matt Mercer illustrating what is going on. Yeah, it is, Todd. <laughs> illustrating how narrative this game is supposed to be. So if fear is rolled, describing as you spotlight a character, as you spotlight an adversary, that the fear causes you, the player, to trip and there right in front of you is a skeleton that's ah, lunging for you. That is at the core of this system is driving towards, and I'm gonna bring up Wither and Bloom Studios again because they very recently did a video on their channel about making games feel more cinematic, feeling like film, feeling like shows, which is what we see in most, in some of the most successful rubrics these days. Things like Dimension 20, things like mm -hmm. Critical Role. Never Stop ex uh, Never stop Blowing Up, I think, was what the latest one from um, Dimension 20 was. It's all about, show me the explosions. Don't bore us, skip to the chorus stuff. And I love that because it feels like there's an emphasis on the experience of people at the table. So um, if, if anybody wants to watch, go ahead and do that. Um, MC Cat, I do yeah. want to talk about that as well. Did you see this part? Uh, yeah, I did. I think I mentioned that while they were live. I, I was like, ooh, I like that. Um, the watch mechanic of like adding in a an extra feature of being like, okay, who is giving watch during this rest? Because that's something that is like standard in most tabletop RPGs, da uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it just, it adds an extra little element to like, you know, someone that's already kind of topped off that might not have anything to do could watch. And then if you don't watch, there's a higher chance that something bad happens versus if you do watch, you get like a higher percentage of uh, catching it before it like comes to unfold necessarily. So smart. Can I tell you that like as a GM over the last like, I want to say three-ish years, I really... I kind of moved away from having instances, I call them instances from like video games, but like stuff happen in the middle of the night or in travel sequences because I just felt like it was slowing me down from getting to the story. And to me, it was taking away from the purpose because it's not part of the core mechanics of the game. Something like this mm -hmm. makes me so excited to add that back in because your players know that it's something that they actually can choose to do and that they're incentivized with an advantage to do. 
I love how they're breathing new life into the stuff that I started to find tedious, you know? Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, the final brain cell, they gave an old sense, yeah. a new flavor, yeah. I think, with the watch mechanic. Maybe I'm wrong, but my own opinion. I agree. You are right. No, you're not. You, you are should right. say it. Say it loud. You're yeah. right. And proud. Just be out there screaming it from the rooftops. Right Everywhere. Brain cell. Yes. Yeah. yeah. MC Cat also mentioning the dagger master yeah, yeah. that's right mm -hmm. uh, being able to earn multiple fear during downtime watch like what did i hear that right I'll, yes absolutely there's a there's i'm i'm expecting that there's going to be a lot of things based on what they were talking about that help the gm <laughs> keep a high threshold of stuff with my whole congested chest that's right the fatal vital brain cell <clears throat> me too the reason i sound crazy lately is because i've been congested for for just weeks um, yeah, incredible. Um, what else? Um, Steven, did you have anything, and, and anybody in chat, if there's anything that you really wanted to talk about, feel free to chime in. But Steven, did you have anything else that you really wanted to talk about? I mean, overall, we hit the, like, I feel like the core things they talked about right at the, because the overall stream was them doing the, like, this is what's changed. And then let us show you combat um, and like actually like showed how those new mechanics worked, which was it's a super smart way to do it, um, especially when it's not changing the whole whole philosophy of the game. It's just changing these like key, especially combat mechanics. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, other than that, like I, I do want to you know, beat a dead horse, but I really do. I I like the the way, the the removing of the clunky math for the armor system, the armor and health, the the not having to be like, oh, and you know, I need to reduce this by at least twelve damage, or it's going to be severe, and just like I just reduce it. Yeah, I I do too. I I really am there of like. <sighs> This system, I oh, I'm just just scrolling around at this point, guys. Sorry. <laughs> and then when I scroll back up, it was Matt Mercer being crazy. That's so funny to me. Um, sorry, guys. Um, I did, I totally lost what I was saying there. The crunchy, the crunchy system. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, I'm hoping that what we're going to hear from the community, because there has been this per perception all along that. Daggerheart may be friendly to players, but it's very crunch. It's, it's crunchier for the GM, like the action tokens, understanding how to explain the concept of armor stuff. Um, I also was saying to, so Chris, Rooks in the Twitch chat and everything who plays with us, remember I got him into tabletop RPG this year. Yeah. He's never played tabletop. He has played a lot of video games and a lot of, especially like, um, he likes role-playing games. He plays a lot of Persona. He's played a lot of um, JRPGs, especially and stuff um, from his youth. Um, I think, and I have not looked into all of Fabula Ultima, but what I've heard, and maybe the final brain cell has, someone in our community has. Fabula Ultima is a new system that's coming out next year as well, I believe. It's coming out at some point. And its goal is to kind of be a conversion of a JRPG into a tabletop system. And I was really excited when I heard that. Because I was like, well, that sounds very cool. But in talking with a lot of people, what I keep hearing is that... It's just too crunchy to be fun yeah. because they're leaning into the concept of the mathematics that's happening in the engine behind the game. But mm. we don't play it for the engine or the math. We play it for the feel of, ouchie, like hurt real bad, glug, 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 yeah. all better. Yeah. Like, like, you know, I, that was a stupid way to explain that. But um, I think, honestly, that... The Good night, changes. Wither and Bloom. Oh my gosh, Wither and Bloom. Yeah, I know, East Coast on your time, but it was so great. Thanks so much for popping in, and we will talk to you soon, very, very soon. Hopefully for another podcast, like, like so. Um, but night, night, night. Um, oh, and see you at PAX Unplugged. <gasps> yeah, anyway. Anyway, this is hopefully, so. <laughs> Bye. Um, what I was saying, though, is that I think with this final change, this final armor change... 
Daggerheart almost feels like it's there in a JRPG system. I've talked a lot about I, as a Chrono Trigger girly from Super Nintendo days, early, early Legend of Zelda stuff, I want to play that in tabletop. I think it was influential in this. I could be wrong, but so many things feel like that to me. Um, I feel like Matt's background in games like Persona, I can feel that in the system he's built. Matt's background in loving Chrono Trigger, I feel that in like the Ribbit background and stuff. I really think that that's some of what we're trying to get out of this, and it's very exciting. Um, I want to comment on something good. Final Brain Cell said. So he said in the stream, Matt Mercer had mentioned something about a wizard using a domain card from another character class, like a as like a flavor thing, which I love that idea. That was one of the things that I actually asked a question on the stream was would they are they planning on selling like domain decks separately from like the core book? Um, because I know I would I, like. And I'm sure they are, yeah. Um, because then you could also, like, it'd be so easy to homebrew a class, uh, like a, uh, a class, mm -hmm. by just saying, okay, now, rather than using Bone and uh, uh, Valor or uh, 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 whatever it is, you can swap them around and use this and this. And yeah. now you're a, it's because I saw it mentioned in the stream earlier too. Someone was like, is there going to be a Blood Hunter? Like mix them around, make a blood hunter. Yeah. Like even if they don't have one right away, like yeah. you can make it. It's yeah. there. And that is something that remember that we're not we're being asked not to yes, we're asked, right yeah. now because we're still in 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 beta mm -hmm. revisions. Everybody has access to one five. It's gonna change. They don't want all of this homebrew to be developed about a system that gets changed fully. <laughs> but. Right. Very soon, they're going to launch it into all of our grubby little hands, and we're all going to make a thousand domains. Yeah. We're going to have every domain that we want. The freedom to make whatever we want is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Like, because I... Matt Mercer is a homebrew guy. Mm -hmm. He is. He made Blood Hunter as homebrew. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, we're going to get that stuff. I'm very excited about all of that. Um, and also, I do think it's a good point. I want to jump into what Chris is saying there about the JRPG stuff. But yeah. to kind of circle this around, all of that stuff, you really, if you have not read the manuscript, guys, please read the manuscript because it really goes into details about how much it is emphasizing high. These rules are here because you need, you probably learning our system want to have it grounded in something functional. But some of the adversaries literally are like, hey, you the GM, make something up here for the fear. Like use fear to do something big and then just make it up because why not? Um, right. The game wants you to be creative. Uh, and yes, gunslinger, yeah. homebrewing a gunslinger in Dungeons and Dragons. Percy from Campaign One, Percival Children Frederick Sander from Zerolo the Third. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Genius, and it has become pivotal to what was happening. So, um, anything on that little piece before we talk about what Chris has put in? Let's move over. So, this is a return to that JRPG. <laughs> Def hit all his names, MC Cat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Support women's rights and women's wrongs. Um, so the the uh, Rook said, going back to that JRPG piece, I remember seeing an interview for Campaign 3 where they were talking about introducing player characters as the campaign went along to get more of a JRPG feel of assembling a party. That is true. That's what Travis was... Travis has gone on record saying that Chetney lived too long. He didn't expect yeah. this to happen. He made an old man and thought he was going to die. Hi, man, toy fun time. <laughs> um, but yeah, like... It really was, he He first had Bertrand Bell, who was built to die. Then he put in Chetney. He was going to keep playing characters that came into the party, JRPG style. And 
Brooks continued, so there's definitely some influences there. Matt Mercer also voice acts in Persona, plus they do a ton of anime voice acting. Yeah, I so think much. What I think is happening here in Daggerheart, and the reason, one of the reasons I'm so excited about it, is that I think Dungeons & Dragons was made based on what people loved at the time, which was 50 years ago. That was 50 years ago. What people were most excited to see was Lord of the Rings style combat of elves and, and dwarves and orcs. That's mm -hmm. the foundations of Dungeons and Dragons. They've, they've updated it since then, but the core is still there. It was a battle heavy system of that specific storyline. Daggerheart is a modern story system where the things that we're excited about are the things that have been foundational to our upbringing. Things yep. like Persona games, uh, Breath of the Wild games, mm -hmm. Dark Souls games, films, you know, all of those things are built into Daggerheart. And I'm excited to see a system where that is already intrinsic to what we're getting to live in. Yeah, I mean, you can see it in, like, even the art cards that we have now, just the different, like, ancestries. Like, the ribbit is so cute and, like, chubby and small and adorable. But then you have the Qatar, uh, the, is that the, the cat people? The, uh, the Qatari, uh-huh, absolutely. Qatari, and that's just an anime cat person. Yeah, like, this elf is Shadowheart. I'm sorry, I know yeah. you can't see her well because it's like on a bad camera and printed at home, but this is Shadowheart. It's her. Like this fawn, this fawn, it like so cute. Like yeah. it's, it's all great. So I'm very excited about it. Um, Khajiit has wares. Has wares indeed. I always want to call him a Khajiit and I know that's, I think that's it's it. Fine. That's the name. I think it's fine. Yeah. Khajiit, yeah. Khajiit has wares. I really want to make a, a Khajiit who is like a traveling salesperson and then I would have wares that I could sell, but it will just be like I have a little marble. You could buy mm -hmm. a marble from me for excellent price, one one bag of gold, you know? One? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's like, mm, great, mm, fantastic. Um, okay, that's really everything that I think that I have except for just talking about the final, what's gonna happen in the next little cycle. Anything you yeah. wanted to add, Stephen? No, I think we can move into that last little bit now. Okay, yeah. So the, the last piece I want to talk about, guys, is just that, remember, if you haven't heard already, PAX Unplugged is coming up. Darrington Press will be there. They will be running something. We're not sure what. Um, and I will be there um, uh, in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. But PAX Unplugged in December and the very first Critical Role Dagger Heart live show, a Christmas. Uh, the community is joking. I recently called it Christmas 2. Uh, let's kill Santa. <laughs> so, um, but that is coming out there are still seats though it's mostly the expensive seats that are left um but if you're gonna be there please let us know uh, so that we can we can all critter hug together um and then also the the biggest piece is that watch closely what's happening in critical role over the next we have the dates now yeah. if if we assume that it's coming out in March because we know spring 2025. We have a window here. It's six months, probably. That in marketing terms, that's that's go time. That's yeah. the marketing mostly works under a year. Um, six months is the sweet spot. If you get to 90 days and you haven't started, you're way behind the curve. Right. So keep a close eye on what's happening next because we're in that frame. I expect that they are conditioning us for dagger heart stuff to come out. Um, I feel a little bit pavloved that they keep Tuesday things happening where I'm like, are you trying to set me up for a Tuesday night? Um, but it's all going to start happening. We will continue to be here with updates. So... Uh, you thought we were gone, but baby, we're back. <laughs> we're never gone. We're always here lurking in the shadows. 
Yeah, like you like the rogues. So like writing down notes, take that down, take that down. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled, everybody. And um, the last piece I do want to note is that if you did see guys- In play. Ooh, very loud, I have to turn that down. Sorry for the boom, everybody, but uh, there is the, I, the um, I'm on the beacon one, but the pre-order live piece. I do want to shout out friends of the channel. I uh, had the, I've been very excited to talk with them recently, um, but the people over at the Pocket Dimension, uh, they were in the release and everything, the release video. Um, so, so exciting. So if you are not already following them, go follow them. They are fantastic folks over there at the Pocket Dimension. And I know that, uh, that, some of them are really rooting for Daggerheart. So I kind of wanted to just take a moment to, I mean, I'm sure that they'll hate me for pausing right there. Um, but listen, if Critical Role is going to feature them, I'm going to feature them here too, you know? So very, very excited to have seen them and everything. But um, that's it, guys. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I'm going to pause on a silly face. And I think that that's just in keeping with uh, with what we do. That's everything that I have. Happy, <laughs> Chris Rook said, happy Halloween season, mandatory fun size. Ah, loud noises. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, but that's it from us, guys. Um, anything last minute, Steven? Um, if you haven't already, we're over <laughs> on Twitter. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we're here on Twitch. You can follow us on Instagram. Um, uh uh Pax and Plug is uh what uh December, December 6th through the 8th. 6th through the 8th, and that's where? Uh that's in Philadelphia, Philly. Philly, yeah. Philly. Ooh, fun, fun, fun. I'm gonna um, be staying with some very exciting people. <laughs> hi. Uh and uh I mean other than that, I think that is everything. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Literally, yeah. But, it's been a while. It's, 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 it's been a while. Nice to Jump back in the GMC. It been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, yeah, and um, and we are gonna be continuing to do little dribs and drabs of content up until the first week in October, and then we will be back with our main campaign. Thank you guys for bearing with us through changes because of community stuff and everything. But um, oh, one more thing. Yes. Um, just to put you on the spot right oh. before we get off. Sick. Um. Uh, now that you've seen these little rule changes, uh -huh. do you think when we get back, are we going to do standard for 1.5? Or are we going to play with some of these new adjustments? Because 1.5 is what we know. got. I you think know? it has to be 1.5. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm so tempted to pull the action tracker, but I think if we're creating, it has to be in 1.5. We're going to talk about it. Guys in the community, <laughs> let us know what you think we should do yeah. that is like, yes, safe. Yes, please. Let us know, and we'll figure it out. That's a great question, though, Stephen. Yeah, Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll think about it. My brain will find a little bit of space. I'll move some boxes up there. We'll figure it out, but... Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Steven, as always, for being here. Yeah, yeah. it's always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I missed seeing you guys, too. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your night. Roll with yeah. hope. Go order reasonably what you can. Uh, nothing <laughs> significant. And, and we will talk to you very soon, guys. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. And goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>